All right. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. What we do is referred to as functional neurology. And today we're going to be going through some pretty exciting information connecting the gut and the brain after head injuries. Most of you have heard a lot about the gut brain axis and the gut brain axis has received a lot of attention in recent years and um sorry i'm just making sure our video is working so it is <clears throat> and it's received a lot of attention in recent years and probably will continue to as we search for reasons as to why some people develop long lasting effects after one head injury or five head injuries and other people have a lot of head injuries and they're seemingly relatively fine another major issue within the world of sports is this entity referred to as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, and there seems to be a neuroinflammatory component to CTE, which is why this research is so important in the possibility of preventing CTE um, for today's athletes and future athletes. So that's where my head is at. Let me know any questions you have. Uh, I'll try to get back to you. I was a little slow on questions this week with it being a holiday week, but um, nonetheless, let me know your questions and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is probably the pivotal article uh, on the subject, or it's the best article to date. It was just fantastically done. Uh, it, was, it was a research study looking at mice. Now, I lots of times will not cite those research articles because, you know, does it completely translate to human beings, yes or no? Um, but in the world of TBI, lots of times we need this foundational research to have a framework to work from to explain uh, similar bio, biological circumstances in mammals, you know, other mammals like human beings. So uh, the title article, Bidirectional Brain Gut Interactions and Chronic Pathological Changes After Traumatic Brain Injury in Mice. <clears throat> so... They go in and they basically induce a head injury. They call it a CCI, a closed cortical impact or closed cranial impact to the mice. And then they go in and look at a variety of aspects of their physiology from their gut health to then what happens to their brain. And not only immediately, but they were examining this over a period of 28 days. And then they also, after a period of time, infected the mice with a bacteria, a Clostridia bacteria. Clostridium bacteria, and when they did that, then they looked for other additional changes uh, in the brain or in the gut. So this first uh, segment I'm highlighting, I thought was an important statement. In the brain, secondary injury, injury mechanisms initiated by trauma can continue for months to years. So that's important. Just pause. In the brain, secondary injury mechanisms initiated by trauma can continue for months to years. So those of you who have post-concussion syndrome, um, you know, and you're wondering why, well, basically, even though that head injury happened one time, you can still be having inflammation in your brain months to years later, continuing on, and include sustained neuroinflammatory processes that contribute to the progressive neurodegeneration and neurological dysfunction. So neurodegeneration basically means you're losing brain cells. And so um, these are just important points. And I know lots of times on YouTube, you know, everybody's talking about the TBI and concussion, but I'm, I'm liking at this point to bring in the articles. So, uh, so many of you are so well informed, so you can go back and read these articles and, and look at this yourself. A little bit farther down, it said cause of death analyses of TBI patients who have survived beyond one year after injury demonstrate that these individuals are 12 times more likely to die from septicemia and 2.5 times more likely to die of digestive system conditions than matched cohorts of the general population. So what is septicemia? Septicemia is usually well, it is where you have bacteria in your blood and then your immune system freaks out because there's bacteria in your blood and it creates this huge inflammatory response. And as a result, people oftentimes die. They find that the gastrointestinal tract is the source of the bacterial translocation. 
a lot of the time, which is why now one of the treatments for septicemia or individuals in the hospital that are concerned about developing septicemia uh, is vitamin C because vitamin C helps with the septicemia process or preventing it. Uh, there's even YouTube ads now where they're trying to raise awareness for septicemia because it is a leading cause of death. Uh, not the leading, I don't believe, but it is a leading cause of death for people in, uh, who are hospitalized. So. So basically, the point is, is that the gut gets very dysregulated after traumatic brain injury. Other studies have shown that within 72 hours, the gastrointestinal tract breaks down after a head injury. So the term leaky gut, it's a horrible term, but basically it just refers to your intestinal cells should be tightly bound together. And when we have a leaky gut process, which is seen in a number of chronic illnesses, that the intestine opens up like a zipper and now food molecules can translocate through, pieces of bacteria can translocate through, which then irritates the immune system and keeps this whole process going. So one of the things that the researchers found, and this slide is really not too dramatic, but if you can see it here, look at, look at this diagram here, part F, where they showed that smooth muscle thickens quite considerably after 28 days. So here in a sham model of the closed cranial impact, um, you know, their smooth muscle is this thick. Uh, 24 hours after the head impact, it's this thick. And really it goes up basically from 40 to 60, you can see here, 28 days later. So there are changes happening in the gut and smooth muscle thickening is something seen in this gastrointestinal process quite often. Now I love this colorful image because it's looking at clotin. What is clotin? So clotin is basically your tight junctional protein. One of zonium, occludin, clotin, those are all tight junctional proteins. They're the zipper. And so they're immunofluorescing this zipper protein here and you can see it's rather bright and prolific. Whereas 28 days after the head injury, look how much clotin there is here. So there's a ton over here, there's not much here. So the expression of clotin goes down after a head injury. And as we go through this broadcast, we'll keep, I'll keep showing you more and more and more. And it's, it's rather interesting because we don't fully understand yet why this happens. And it seems like once one domino goes, 10 other dominoes go. Uh, there is research showing that the gut immediately breaks down because of high adrenaline and they can block that effect by giving people basically alpha and beta blockers, which are medications which block adrenaline from binding. Because when you hit your head, it is not only a stressful event for the body, if you were to fracture your arm, so to speak, but hitting the head causes a profound increase in the release of adrenaline. Uh, stress hormones can go up by 300%. So when that happens, all these stress hormones are floating around, they can selectively, well not selectively, but they will have a negative impact on the gut because the gastrointestinal barrier is very thin. Your skin out here is several layers thick. Your gastrointestinal skin is one cell layer thick, surrounded by some muscle and some nerve tissue. So pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Here you can see a nice representation of it as well. So your your proteins in your gut that prevent leaky gut stop being expressed after head injury. Now, this is looking at GFAP, which stands for, I always, let me pronounce it right, glial fibrillary acid, acid protein. So, glial fibrillary acid protein, might be acidic protein. But anyways, GFAP is a biomarker for brain injuries. In fact, now they're looking at you know, if you have a CT scan that's normal and we look at your GFAP levels, um, what does that mean for the outcome of your head injury? So GFAP along, you may have heard of S, uh, I believe it's S100 beta uh, is another protein that they commonly look at. Um, so GFAP, which is a protein produced by your glial cells, which are like your immune cells of your brain. GFAP is also produced by glial cells in your gut because you have a nervous system called the enteric nervous system within your gastrointestinal tract, which is rather interesting. For example, people who have Parkinson's disease, you see the Parkinson's biochemical process 
where they start laying down this protein called alpha-synuclein. So their alpha-synucleinopathy starts in their gut, which is why one of the first symptoms of Parkinson's disease is constipation. And as that biochemical process spreads up their gut into their brain stem, and then finally to the top of the brain, by the time it's hit their, their dopamine producing area of their brain stem, like by the time they develop symptoms, they've lost 80% of their dopamine. Nonetheless, it starts in their gut. So this GFAT protein, these researchers looked at its expression. Uh, and again, the higher the GFAT protein typically is a sign of traumatic brain injury because it indicates that your brain immune cells are, are you know, going into high alert producing this, this protein. So I think this slide pretty well says it all. You can see the sham animal, look at the green immunofluorescence. Look at 24 hours after head injury, really it almost looks like there's a reduction of GFAP. And then, which you can see here, even in the mRNA, so how much of uh, this is being genetically produced. And then here, you can see after 28 days, look at the level of GFAP. And this is in the gut, which is so surprising because I've read for years about GFAP. And forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it, I, I should be better at labeling this S100 beta. <clears throat> so S100 beta has been looked at a lot in terms of saying, okay, has somebody had a head injury or not? Well, look at the GFAP here in the gut. So this is saying that these enteric glial cells are really going into high alert from the head injury. So this indicates this crosstalk between your gut and your brain. Going further, let me see here, was this the other one? This is the one on GFAP, basically in the brain as well. So they saw it in the gut, clearly, and let me just go back up. So these are your microvilli, basically. You can see it here. Your microvilli are like the finger-like projections of the intestines. So here now, they're going into a part of the brain, and they're seeing, okay, look here, close cranial injury. And then they inoculated the mice, like I told you about, with the bacteria, and look at the GFAP expression here as well. So pretty remarkable. Now this also indicates the area of injury from uh, in the brain of these mice and you can see the injury by itself injures these areas whereas the area of the injury really increases when these mice are then inoculated with an infection. What does it indicate is that your gut heavily influences the degree of neurological inflammation. So you have a head injury, you're going to have brain inflammation. But you have a head injury and then you have gut dysfunction, you're going to have way more effect in your brain, which is why I've worked with traumatic brain injury patients and they go and eat something for breakfast. They have toast or they have bacon or they have eggs or whatever it was that we isolated. And it's like they developed a, the symptoms of a concussion. It's because their intestines are so porous that these food molecules literally go through and then their immune system freaks out against them, leading to systemic inflammation, probably more GFAT production, and then the area of their injury increases. So pretty remarkable. It's pretty interesting. I hope this is uh, resonating with you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. This is the article I referenced about the beta and alpha blocker for adrenaline, and it prevents intestinal dysfunction induced by traumatic brain injury. And that's it. So um, are there other studies on TBI in mice and TBI and gut dysfunction? Yeah, but the one I presented, I feel, is the best to date. And I haven't seen anything since then that was published in 2017 that was better. So it's a really nice summary, and it was a really nice study uh, looking at everything. So if you have any questions, email us, info at gatesbrainhealth.com. You see the number there. And happy 4th of July weekend, everybody. And we will see you later. Um, let me see here. And just saying hi to everybody on Facebook. And we'll end the video now.